So what are maybe some of the challenges that you've experienced when starting your venture? Hmm, fundraising. Uh, <laughs> money, money, money. That is a huge one. Right. Um, um, I'll tell you a bit of a story about that, but before um, before that story, um, but there's also team, like getting the right team on the board. Right. It's always the, I think those are the two difficult things that every entrepreneur, um, to me, really struggle with, um, you know, in creating change and getting the business out there. We talked about leading self with the first topic of self-awareness being discussed and we had Hossam on at the podcast. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about creating solutions through entrepreneurial thinking and my guest today has the audacity to share with us the first incubation hub in Liberia and his journey throughout that and what it means for its youth. Um, this is also a part of the general theme of entrepreneurial leadership of the AOU pad- podcast. So I want to formally welcome you to the last podcast of January 2020, AOU podcast, Entrepreneurial Leadership in Africa. My guest today is Ahmed Kome- Kone. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'd like for him to introduce himself and tell us a bit more about his entrepreneurial journey and what entrepreneurship entrepreneurial leadership means to him uh yeah then we can get into the topic give us a bit of your experiences and what have you thank you very much um my name is Ahmed Kekone um I'm from Liberia obviously and I co-founded Smart Liberia um Smart Liberia it's a it's an education support you know company or organization that's helping um, young people in Liberia to like have access to the skills, the network, and opportunities that they need to become uh, the best version of themselves. Right. So essentially, we we're, we're harnessing the entrepreneurial potential of young people in Liberia. Um, we do that through um, essentially three different things. Um, one is you know um, tech for social impact. We I mean, we bring young people together who are really passionate about technology. Mm. Um, you know to use their passion um, and learn the skills that is required to like um, create solutions to some of the problems um, that we face. You know in our communities, for instance. Um, um, waste disposal, um, it's a huge problem in Liberia, you know, proper waste disposal. So how do you get young people to create applications that um, connect, you know, um, people who have waste problem with those who have the solution, for instance? So how do you create a company around that um, using application? That's currently one of the uh, one of the things that we're working on. Right. Um, yeah, and also, how do you get young people um, interested in business um, as opposed to politics? And, um, and you know, not that something is wrong with politics, but we've had a lot of politicians in Africa, and right. we've not really been able to, like, um, achieve the kind of the kind of impact we we can achieve when we have people who are um, self-driven, who have um, the mindset of entrepreneurs and who are able to, like, um, create solution to community problem using the market solution, right? Because right? yeah. I mean, you can only go far if you're able to like monetize to some extent your your services. Right. Um, it's a huge struggle for most of the young people. Um, when I was young, when I was like when we were starting up with this whole small Liberia thing, we said, "Hey man, um, don't go for the money. Uh, money is not as important as you think it is." But then you, when you Get in when you get a bit of a skin to the game, and then you realize you need money to like pay people and all these things. So, um, yeah, essentially, that's what we're doing. We're creating solutions to some of the toughest problems in Liberia. That's quite heavy, and that's a very big burden to like put on your shoulders. Um, so maybe you can tell us more about your professional or rather your entrepreneurial journey throughout your life. Um, tell us how you were able to maybe gain this entrepreneurial leadership? Has it always been something that you've had? Or is it something that you've nurtured as a result of being a part of AOU? 
Um, I think it's a combination of both. Okay. Uh, my mom and then my dad, and those business people, people who are, you know, in their own little way, creating solutions to some of the problems that they're facing through through business. So okay. um, I think I've had this entrepreneur gene, if there's, if there's such a thing. <laughs> uh, but coming to ALU has sort of really, really exposed me to all the tools that you can get to, like, um, you know, um, put your ideas out there and if me in an effective and efficient manner, right? You could be running a small business, you know, um, somewhere with no education, so to speak. But right. if you get into a space where you're exposed to all the tools um, and the network um, and then the opportunities that you need to like create a wider impact um you can you can really do a lot of great job with that so um i think that's one thing um ALU has been really able to like um do for me um and i think i remember before starting this whole journey i went to ghana um it's the time for like a little conference I was very young like um and I went to Ghana, and then after that, I went to Nigeria, and then I saw Co-Creation Hub, right? right. Co-Creation Hub. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Nigeria in Lagos. Uh, there's a place called Co-Creation Hub where um, um, they bring where young entrepreneurs come and network, talk to each other, um, right. and build on each other's ideas, and then you know collaborate um, on different business ideas. Um, when I saw that, that was a huge eye-opener for me. I was like, hey, man, there's none of this thing in Liberia. Like, how do we, in this age and time, um, you know, get to where we're going if you don't have um, an incubation, you don't have an incubator um, or an organization or a company, for instance, that is really right. um, exposing and helping young people um, with the skills and the network, but then also... Um, the platform and then resources to like bring the ideas to life. So that was where this whole idea came from. And since then, um, I've never really stopped. We've been working on this idea um, day and night, day in, day out. And um, we were really, really um, happy and, you know, pleased to launch the the first um, of a kind of, you know, incubation and services in Liberia. Um, so we call it the Change Makers Hub, where we are now bringing a lot of young people together um, who are passionate about different things, you know, to work and collaborate and solve some of the problems that is confronting them. Um, up to present, we've been able to, like, um, send 25 students abroad um, on different opportunities, right? Um, yeah. We currently have an entrepreneur, you know, um, services that is helping some of the brightest young people in the country, um, um, learn the, the basis of, you know, business development, um, fundraising, um, and, you know, so forth and so on. So that's where um, I think that's, in short, that is the journey. So from what I'm understanding in terms of creating solutions through entrepreneurial thinking, you were looking to get people who care enough about, you know, innovation and creativity and putting that together to... Uh, solve a problem that's worth addressing is that is is from what i'm understanding is that what you're saying right right because um i think it's one thing to just come and set up a business but it's equally another thing to um solve a crucial problem using a business solution right i um, totally agree that yeah. right i think that is uh, one one key thing that sort of separates um um, the entrepreneurs that we see now um, right. and people who are just... Uh, Business you know, owners. Exactly. Right. Oh, okay. I'm learning quite a bit. <laughs> um, so let's talk about how you were able to inspire young people in Liberia to create lasting solutions by training them to build credible and impact-driven startups. I don't know. Um, I think... I mean, when you're at your best, um, that actually inspires a lot of people. Right. Um, so it's when, a like, like minds think alike. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So if you're doing all the things that you set up to, like, you know, to do, and you're doing them really well, and you know, and through that you're helping other people, I think um, that in itself is an inspiration um, for people. Because I don't. Well, motivational speeches are really good, but um, they can only go. Um, to some extent, right? right? So, for instance, Kobe Bryant, right? We, yeah. I mean, everyone, 
around the world now is Moni Kubi. It's because of his lifestyle. It's because of the things she did through basketball, not necessarily the motivational speeches he was yeah. giving, if he gave any at all. So I think um, we we generally inspire people through the work we do. Um, um, don't get me wrong, motivation has a lot of, um, has some part to play, but um, I think generally, um, you see, you inspire by Fred because you see him doing, you see he, you see him do stuff, right? That you find very inspirational. Um, I think for me, um, that's how we're able to like inspire people um, in Liberia, young people particularly. Right, great, 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 great. So there's an accolade here that we forgot to slip in in the in the, in the beginning of the podcast and. You happen to be a goalkeeper with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and also, okay, the co-founder of your incubation hub. So what is your role as a goalkeeper with the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation? Um, I think um, in Liberia, I basically help coordinate the activities um, on the ground because right. I think there I mean, are only two goalkeepers in Liberia and... I'm lucky enough to be one, um, so I get to like um, coordinate the activities back home, um, work with the team in West Africa, right? Um, to like you know collaboratively work on some of the uh, million, some of the SDG goals and you know um, the global goals, so to speak. Um, yeah, so I, that's uh, my work with them. Um, we help um, lobby essentially governments, and mm-hmm. through our work, you get to do that because you have to have the space first of all to do the kind of work that we do, and you have to have some sort of government support, right, um, to be able to really, really create the changes and impact you you're passionate about um, in your country. So, what has what has been your measure of success um, towards as 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 your role? as a goalkeeper, what has been your measure of success for that? Um, I think, well, I mean, the whole goalkeeper organization is a bit tricky. um, Right. In that uh, most of the things that you do are really lobby and and then also the individual work you do on the ground, right? And so um, my impact with Smart Liberia also counts as um, an impact, you know, for... Um, an impact with the goalkeepers, right? Um, right? But then there's an additional layer to like that. You right. get to like um, go to um, places and advocate for um, some, you know, changes to like be introduced, say, in the government. Um, I remember we did this specific campaign um, back home um, about increasing, um, about, you know, making, I mean, increasing access to information for young people and, right. um, you know, um, the librarian public in general, because um, that was more of a government thing. Access to information is um, really, really key. And you, if you don't have access to information, you can make um, decisions and you cannot, you know, um, have a significant change in the country. So um, being a goalkeeper allows you to, like, um, convene uh, different people and lobby and, you know, advocate for policies that um, allow people to, like, you know, um, function well inside it, make a better decision. Um, that will have a, that will have an impact on their life. So, um, in addition to just um, the things that we do at Smart Liberia and the the whole youth empowerment and the whole entrepreneurial you know leadership thing and you know um, the whole capacity building thing for young people, we also lobby and advocate um, for and against policies that right. um, you know that I aim at you know um, improving society. Right. So from what I'm understanding of all of that is that you measure your success through the impact that you have on the youth, um, the numbers that you bring in um, when it comes to social innovation and getting people passionate about your venture or getting people passionate about technology and getting people passionate about entrepreneurial leadership as well. Right, right. Because right. um, the only way you can get it, you can become a goalkeeper is when you're doing something um, on your own. It's not like there's an application that you apply um, through which you, you know, you admit it as a goalkeeper. So right. um, the goalkeeper see you um, as a change maker already on the road to like, you know, creating a significant change in the community and then reach out to you like, hey, 
um, can you be? Um, we've seen your work. Um, we've seen the kind of work you've been able to do in your community. Um, and we want you to be a goalkeeper. It's more like um, an ambassador right. um, for the global goals and, you know, the um, sustainable development goals. So, yeah, so it's much more like that. I think it's one of those things that is really... Um, you know, you don't get in because you apply. If someone has to see the work that you've been able to like do and then just write you, yeah. um, that's how this whole thing is. Great. So obviously with every venture that um, is started, there's always a problem that they're trying to solve. Um, obviously, the social innovation situation is something worth solving, something worth addressing to get the youth excited about entrepreneurial leadership. So what are maybe some of the challenges that you've experienced when starting your venture? Hmm. Fundraising. Yeah. <laughs> money, money, money. That is a huge one. Right. Um, um, I'll tell you a bit of a story about that, but before um, before that story, um, but there's also team, like getting the right team on the board. Right. It's always the, I think those are the two difficult things that every entrepreneur, um, to me, really struggle with, um, you know, in getting the, the um, in getting, you know, in creating change, in getting the business out there, and um, in creating impact. So um, I remember when um, we first started this whole journey, um, people, I mean, you barely had money. Like, it was so difficult to, like, um, raise funds. First of all, um, you know how it is. You don't, um, you don't have the profile, you know, the required profile. Right. Um, I think the idea has always been um, you have to go to school first, um, graduate. Be um, in a corporate job. Exactly. You, for, right? you know, for some years and then come back and say, hey, um, you know, I'm ready now to start a company. So entrepreneurship, I think for most people, um, the mindset is changing though. Right. But for those people, I think it was more of a second act. I've already lived my life, I've attained some level of success. And now so, I want to find my purpose. Exactly. Right. So what if you turn your purpose into, um, you know, everything, like the whole entrepreneurship thing? But again, that's um, tricky. Um, it's extremely risky because um, if you fail, um, um, that's, yeah, that's something that most people cannot deal with, failure um, in its own, you know, just getting by on a daily basis. And then the amount of stress right. um, and loneliness that actually comes with, like, this thing because okay. most of the time you're just working on your business ideas. Um, you're trying to find the right people. You miss out on many social sort of activities if they're not really geared towards helping you build the business right. and connect you to the right people. So fundraising, um, that is money, 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 um, and then having the right team. Because if right. you have the right team, um, I think it makes your work a lot more easier. One of the challenges we faced over the years is that um, just like we may just like us, we didn't have, you know, a professional team to, like, start with. Um, you always um, had your friends here and there, and it gets to a, it gets, it gets to a place where, um, you know, your friends are not really those who have the skills, the requisite skills to, like, get the work done. Um, and then the question becomes, how do you, how do we, how do you change those people? Like, how do you work around them? Right. Like, build the skills that they need to, like, get the work done. Okay. Um, it's actually one of the um, difficult things with, you know. So sort of um, picking out the circle of friends that you keep around and as well as the team that you work with is curated to, in such a manner that you have such a good chemistry that things get done on time and whenever you need them to be done. So I do have to ask, though, how were you able to mitigate the problem or the challenge that came with financing or funding? Um, I think for us, one of the blessings is actually been having the right board that is able to like introduce you to like um, different partners and, and people. Um, we, for instance, last year we had a board member who, um, you know, took us to like places. I mean, we could not have you know gotten there by ourselves. So right. Just having the right right board that is, you know, able to, like, navigate those spaces and then introduce you to here and there, uh, making sure they're telling your story um, in, an, in an effective and efficient manner, right? So that has been one of the, um, you know, 
one of the things that have really, really helped us, um, you know, raise money. But then also, I think just applying for grants and applying for every fund, I mean, fundraising opportunity, like every, um, there are companies who are interested in giving um, money to, co- I mean, to organizations and companies that are doing, I mean, really um, a good work in their community and seizing those opportunities and making sure um, we get them. We've also been um, one of the, the the things that have um, helped us along. Um, and yeah, people who, individuals too, like, you know, the people who individually believe in the work that you're doing, um, they, they, they understand the difficulties and the constraints um, very well to like come in once in a while. But then most importantly, um, gets to a point where you have to monetize um, your product. If you're not making, if you're not, this is one thing I've learned lately. If you're not making money off your idea, I mean, you should, you should probably uh, pursue another opportunity. Um, you have to make sure you're self-sustainable. Right, that's great, that's great. This podcast has shown me that it's a gift that keeps on giving. And every time I have a guest on here, there's always something new I'm learning. And with you, it's been just getting the youth excited about certain things and just being passionate about seeking opportunities where others see problems. Yeah. Um, it's quite amazing. So with that said, um, I'd really like you to give us maybe five major steps for someone who's maybe trying to start a business or trying to start a, tr- trying to start out throughout the entrepreneurial journey. Like, what advice would you give them or five actionable steps you'd give them towards making them successful? Um, get a co-founder. <laughs> I mean, I've heard people talk about me being a low entrepreneur. It might, right. sound, it might, it might sound a bit, a bit sexy, but... It doesn't really work. Right. Um, get a co-founder who complements uh, your weakness, right? Or your weaknesses. Um, that's one. Um, make sure your idea is um, your idea can be monetized. So, from on the go, you have to know um, that this idea can generate some money at the end of the day. Right. Sustainability. Sustainability. Right. Um, that's the the one word for like for it. Um, and I think one of the things is having the right team um, from the right. beginning is really, really difficult. I mean, because we get so excited about ideas and then we just want to roll with anyone who comes on board. Um, right. It's a big mistake. You always want to make sure people are as passionate as you are um, about your work. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, Brian I mean, Tresky, you know the guy who... Airbnb, right? right. It's one of the things you said the last time that before they hire people, they were like, um, if you had, so if you have, um, I think if you have six more months to live, will you work for our company? So that's how extreme the hiring process was. Right. So if you said yes, then the, now they're like, yeah, this guy um, or this dude actually believes in what we do. Because if you have six more months to live and the only thing you want to do is to work for this company, then, I mean, that says a lot Obviously, of Obviously, there's a passion. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, maybe give us two more? Um, two more. What would those be? Uh, have the right board. Like, look for people who are not only sitting on your board. Right. But then who are looking for money for you and who believe um, in your idea, okay. right? You ought to do that. Like, you're doing yourself a really good job if you can do that. Um, storytelling this is one of the things we've not really been um, doing a great job at. Yeah. Um, but I think that is changing. So tell stories, tell stories, tell stories about your impact, to the work you're doing. Um, I thought it was, um, you know, how this whole idea... It's humble to like now to talk about the things that you're doing and blah blah. But hey, man, that's how you get the money. So you have to tell your story, <laughs> and that's how you get people talking about whatever it is that you're doing, right? To build right. in that impact. Yeah. So, wrapping this up, you are a graduate. Mm, mm, officially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are your plans after graduation this uh, year? Um, go back home, continue right. this exciting work, right? Uh, and I'm I'm actually working on a, a small company on this time, but right. um, but I think the key thing that I'll be doing um, in the in the next um, 
six to like one year would be um, six months to one year um, um, to a year would be you know just work continue work to work on this um, idea and, right. and get us to a place where um, we basically don't need um, the, the co-founders so to speak to to be able to get a work done or to gen to fundraising you know so far and so on all right then well this has been a podcast entrepreneur leadership in africa today we were talking about creating solutions through entrepreneurial thinking with Ahmed kone thank you so much for being with us um next week we're going to have a special guest so stay tuned for that as well we will see you in the next podcast